Hello everyone, hope you're doing good. Since a long time, many of you were saying that I should make videos on New Zealand PR. So here is that video. In this video, we'll discuss the step-by-step -step process to apply the New Zealand PR. And we'll also discuss the timelines as well. So if you want to immigrate to New Zealand and settle there, this video is for you. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, I am Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad and I regularly make videos to help people immigrate and settle abroad. If you have any questions related to Canadian PR, you can go on to Facebook group Dream Abroad Canada and also you can follow me on Instagram at Dreamers Abroad. Okay guys, before we discuss the step-by-step -step process, it is very important to understand what does the permanent resident visa of New Zealand actually means. So just like the permanent resident visa of any other country, this also gives you the right to live and work in New Zealand indefinitely. But to be eligible to apply for this visa, you must have held a resident visa for at least two years. Don't get disheartened. This is just an additional step. You can apply this resident visa living in your home country and it can be applied through the points based system. We'll talk all about it in detail, but it is very important to understand the difference between these two visas. So both these visas actually gives you the liberty to live in New Zealand permanently. But with the resident visa, you can travel in and out of New Zealand for a specific period of time only, usually for 24 months and in some situations it can even be for 5 or 10 years. But in the permanent resident visa, there's no time limit on travel conditions. So once you actually get the resident visa, you move to New Zealand live and work there for two years after that you can actually apply the permanent resident visa so to apply the new zealand pr the most important and the crucial eligibility condition is to have the resident visa and going further we'll discuss how you can apply the new zealand resident visa through their point based system so for you to understand which resident visa should you apply I've taken you to this official website of Government of New Zealand. Here you'll get a couple of options. You can apply for the visitor visa, study visa, work visa or live permanently. Now we're talking about getting the permanent residency visa. So we'll click on this option. Now here in this screen, it'll take you to explore visa options for living permanently. Now it will ask a few more questions. I want to work, invest, join family or study. So if you want to start a business in New Zealand, you can actually go on to select this option but I'll go on with the first option because I know most of my viewers would go for this option. Then here it will ask if you're in New Zealand or outside of New Zealand. So I'm selecting outside of New Zealand. Then it's asking for a job offer so I'm selecting that I do not have a job offer. So basically picking the most common options in the options list I'm just selecting India. Then just put in your age here. Let's say if I put in 30. It is displaying me two options mainly. The first one is skilled migrant category resident visa and the second one is the global impact permanent resident visa. Now for the second option, you must have held the global impact work visa for at least 30 months. So we will not talk about this option. We will talk in detail about this category skilled migrant category resident visa. With this visa, you can live, work and study in New Zealand indefinitely and also you can apply for the permanent residence. So let's talk about the step-by-step -step process to apply the skilled migrant category resident visa in detail. All right guys, now you know that New Zealand permanent residency is almost equivalent to skilled migrant category resident visa. If you have that visa for two years, you can apply for the New Zealand PR. So let me first list down all those steps and then we will discuss each step in detail. So the first step is the self-assessment. The second step is English test. The third step is education assessment. The fourth one is submitting your EOI online. Then you'll receive your ITA. After that, you'll submit the application and at last you would receive your visa. So let's start discussing from the first step which is the self-assessment. Now just like the Canadian Express Entry system, if you are aware of that, this system is also points based. So in the case of New Zealand, points are based on age, education, work experience, partner, skilled employment in New Zealand. Only these are the factors based on which you are awarded some points. Now the next video I make would be on this self-assessment on how you can actually calculate your points 
if you'll be eligible or not but we can still discuss about this a little in here in this video. So we have voided maximum points for age if you are between the age of 18 and 39 and if you're above 55 you're not awarded any points. For education also if you have masters or PhD you're given more points. Now unlike Canada if you have more work experience like 8 years or 10 years you'll get more points. Now partner skills if your partner also has English test result and got the required work experience then you'll get more points and similarly if you have employment in New Zealand then you'll get more points as well. Now the minimum points is 160. So if you can score 160 then only you'd become eligible. As I told you in the next video we'll discuss about the eligibility criteria in, in very detail so just in case if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please click the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. Okay, the next step is the English test. You have a couple of options, IELTS, both academic and general, TOEFL IBT, PTE academic, OET, and there are a couple of other tests as well like Cambridge English B2 first and B2 first for schools. But those are not very famous so I haven't mentioned those here. Now the important thing to note here is that for IELTS, the minimum overall score is 6.5 so you need not score 6.5 in each section the overall score needs to be minimum 6.5 similarly for TOEFL IBT it's 79 for PTE academic it's 58 but for OET you need to score grade B in each of the four skills so that is something very important to note here okay now the next step is your education assessment now this assessment should be done by New Zealand Qualifications Authority that relates to the New Zealand Qualifications Framework. So just for example, let's say you did your Bachelor's of Technology in your home country or somewhere else. It needs to be equivalent of Bachelor of Technology according to the New Zealand Qualifications Framework. Now the next step is submitting your EOI online. So you have to submit your expression of interest online. Now not just online you have the option of submitting it through the paper application as well but most of the people would choose online because it's a lot easier. There's an application cost involved. You have to pay 530 New Zealand dollars to submit your EOI. It's not free of cost. Okay now when you have good score let's say you have a score of 180, 190 or 200 and let's say your profile gets picked. Then after the selection from the pool, they will review your EOI within a time frame of 3 weeks to 1 month time. That is an intermediate step before you receive the ITA. ITA is invitation to apply. Usually draws are conducted every 2 weeks but please note if you have a score of 160 or 170 that does not ensure that you would certainly get the ITA. It is dependent on couple of factors like how many invitations are they issuing, what are the scores of the profiles that are there in the pool at that point of time. Now the selection of EOI has been suspended until next month because of the COVID-19 restrictions. It has been getting suspended since a long time now and there are chances that it might be extended even after this. It is being said that they will review the situation in this month or the next and then they'll take the decisions accordingly. Okay, so after you've got the ITA, the next step is submitting your application. Here you have to get your police clearance certificate, you have to get your medical tests done, you also have to submit many other documents and for all of that you need time. So you'll get 4 months to submit your application with all those documents and completed set of forms. Here there's an application cost involved yet again and that is 3310 New Zealand dollars. So once you submit the application it takes a lot of time and they say that the processing time is 23 months which is actually a lot. They say that 90% of the applications get processed within this time frame. But all these timelines that I've mentioned, the processing times are from the pre-COVID times. Now there would be a big queue almost at every step and processing times will increase for sure. But yes guys this is the high level step by step process of the skilled migrant category resident visa for the New Zealand PR. If you get this visa, after two years of staying there in New Zealand, you can apply for the New Zealand PR. 
So this was all the information I wanted to convey through this video. The next video would be on the self-assessment, how you can assess if you're eligible to apply for the New Zealand PR, or rather I should say, if you're eligible to apply for the skilled migrant category resident visa. Guys, apart from that, there are many tiny details that I could not include in just one video. But yes, as I told you, this is the high level step by step process to apply the New Zealand PR. I really hope that this video would help you understand the process, if not much. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any comments, any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching this video.